welcome to a uh, very special Dragon Plus live stream. This is a very special Dungeons and Doodles today. I'm told we're alive. I hope we're alive. <laughs> In any case, uh, we have two special uh, Dungeons and Doodles guests with us tonight. Guest artists here at TwitchCon. Sitting to my right is Satine Phoenix. Uh, Satine Phoenix, illustrator, comic book creator, author who spent the uh, spent uh, several years in the Los Angeles Dungeons and Dragons community. She coordinated weekly games at Meltdown Comics. Uh, helped found the celebrity charity uh, which we're looking forward to this year as well. Co-created Maze Arcana in 2016 with Rudy Rutenberg as a way to connect with fellow gamers across the world. In addition, these days, she's helping run Dungeons & Dragons social media and community efforts. And you can watch her on Tuesday nights, 7 p.m., on the D&D Twitch channel for Sirens of the Realm, of course. Uh, did, I, did I forget everything in the... Uh, I like it when you say all that stuff. <laughs> Those are good things. <laughs> uh, so uh, welcome, Satine. We're super happy to have you here. And seated to my left, we have not Dan, but Daniel Presedo from Adobe. Daniel currently works full time at Adobe on Photoshop. <laughs> you may have spotted one of his many Easter egg screens in the products over the last decade, and now I have to know what those might be. Uh, he helped pioneer many digital workflows in the early 90s before they became common years later, and today, fosters connections throughout various industries, teaches Photoshop, and in his spare time, creates books to share with his family. So welcome, Daniel. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So uh, we one of the reasons we wanted to have you on, not just because we're uh, infatuated with Photoshop and everything that you guys do, but uh, Adobe is uh, just opened up a contest that is uh, running now through November 16th, the Terror of Undermountain, where fans can create a new monster, something that might be lurking in the depths of Undermountain, uh, using the Adobe Photoshop tools. Does that sound that about right? That is correct. All right. Uh, so if folks want to find out more about the contest, it is open now. Uh, it is at summontheterror.com. Submissions are open now until Friday, November 16th. Judging will take place all throughout November, and we'll announce the winner a little later on. Uh, yes. But for now, we kind of wanted to walk through with you a little bit about what tools Adobe is providing and how we can use them. And uh, we're going to have you and Satine create yes. some monsters using the digital tools as sort of examples that, that might inspire some folks. That is correct. We are actually providing through that portal a 30-day trial version of Photoshop mm. through that portal. So you have a chance to use Photoshop, all the tools in its entirety for this contest. So, you know, I look forward to seeing everybody entering. There are no excuses now. It's all about skills. <laughs> all right. Uh, so before we get into uh, sharing out the monsters we're going to create, Daniel is going to teach us a bit about the digital tools. And uh, then, then I'm going to throw it to you guys. We've got some questions. We've got some suggestions. As always, we love the suggestions and comments in the viewers and chat as well. Uh, but first, Daniel, if you could show us a little bit about what uh, the Terror of Under Mountain digital tools are available. And uh, I usually, oh, my, my crutch. I usually have Pelham as my crutch <laughs> working the controls. So uh, I'll wait for the signal so that we're going to be showing Daniel's screen uh, to everyone here and then the folks at home. And he's going to do a little bit of driving for these digital tools. We'll see what, uh, what, we, can, what we can work with. All right. Let me know when they, they switch to my screen. But I can start talking about, well, obviously, Photoshop is known for its unique brush engine and, uh, and tool presets, brushes, brush presets. Um, if you actually see my screen, I don't know if you see my screen. Yes. You do? OK, excellent. So I, I think I'm the only one that can right. see. <laughs> We've I got see the it. backdrop Thank you. here. I'm going to check out your screen there. Yes. So there's ways to organize brushes finally in Photoshop, the last release. So 
Um, there are a lot of great brushes now available. Kyle Webster has made some brilliant brushes. They're all free now. They're available in Photoshop. I use them all the time to get certain effects, whether they're hair, ink brushes, and things like that. So getting used to those kind of things um, can really bring, you know, make it easy and fun to draw in Photoshop. I use a lot of tool presets still, um, which are the same now as brushes. You can bring them in. You can organize them, move them around, and uh, it's really great. So brushes are key to getting your, your, your unique style inside Photoshop. So that would be the first thing to go through um, are the brushes. Now, obviously, after that, we're going to start talking about how do you kind of conceptualize a, a monster um, using that, those kind of brushes and whatnot. So for this one, for example, if I break it down and I take out some of these things here, it kind of looks very simplistic. Um, actually, I have even an earlier version of this. Let's see, a really early version. It started out with a simple sketch. And so really, if you really want to build your own creative monster, it, there are ways now with Dungeons and Dragons folks gave us a library full of juicy tidbits. And so to really get you going in the process, you have a sketch and you have all these different pieces and body parts and obviously combining that with your brush talents and your skills of color and knowledge of design, you will make a splendid monster. Um, I just want to make sure that you guys know that this is also available. It's like a gigabyte of assets that you can just download. Now, I've copied them into what Photoshop has a library. Mm -hmm. And the library is just a great, great way to kind of share assets, store assets. It's kind of like the old kind of file cabinet that you used to have. But I can actually share it with Satine, which I won't, because that would give her an unfair advantage over me. So I will not do that. <laughs> Okay, I got but you're it. welcome. <laughs> and I'll, I'll reiterate a couple of times. If yes. folks want a trial version of Photoshop, if they want access to these tools, if they want to submit the creature, it's yes. all at uh, summon the mon summon the terror. Summon the terror. Dot com. Dot com. Yes, it's that is an exclusive portal for a 30-day trial. So you can use that for the entire 30-day. Submit your monster, win the prize, get a job with TSR, then buy Photoshop. <laughs> And that'll be great. And we didn't talk about the prize. We should. We should. Oh, mention we really probably should. The prize. There so, is a good prize. Yes. Uh, so one one uh, winner will receive five thousand of Daniel's dollars. Five thousand dollars, which you can use <laughs> for a really juiced up machine. <laughs> but wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. In addition to five thousand dollars, the winner will travel to uh, Wizards of the Coast headquarters in Renton, Washington, uh, to work with some of the Wizards of the Coast creative folks there. And the winning submission will be uh, commemorated as an unpainted collectible miniature as well. So That's it'll be amazing. made available in physical form at some point down the road. There are a lot of prizes to be had for this. So I really encourage you, if you ever had the desire to work in this field, this is a really great chance. Uh, if you can't you know, do it, then I'm going to be very sad because I want to see everybody's entries. So please, if you, I encourage you, if you really <laughs> have the desire to make that monster and get it 3D printed, which is really cool. Mm. I would highly encourage you to do that. So going back to some of the other processes for, I don't know how, how much Satine uses puppet tools in Photoshop. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> there, there are a lot of clever ways. So like I was saying, there are assets provided that you can use to help create the monster. And I use actually these arms and these horns. And I just wanted to show there are some tools that people don't know maybe exist, like a puppet warp. And a puppet warp is, act, is kind of what it sounds like. It's you're going to do is like kind of puppeteering tools. You're going to pin things down like this so that you can, you can move things around, right? So that, that is really handy in getting some of these things. And if I take that one out and then I just kind of like move this, you know, I could just kind of do that. But <laughs> so cool. You know. Can you do the floss? He, I could do the floss. <laughs> I, I can't do the floss. He could do the floss. <laughs> How many of you can do the floss? Um, Satine said she would be flossing. I certainly can. Right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a really clever way to kind of get things to shape. I mean, a lot of people know about there's this thing called transform, and you can do something like a transform warp, which also is really great for getting things uh, to fit inside a form, you know, to fit inside, you know, like the monster. You want to kind of move it around. There are all these great tools to use um, with the, the really nice assets that they provided. Now, if you are entering the contest, you know, don't, don't do this. I did this as an example, even though it looks really cool. I just use the assets to create something. 
you have, you want to be unique. You want to represent what kind of monster you have. So don't just like put them all together in splice because someone might actually do the exact same thing. And if but you now we've it, seen this one. Now that so you've this seen it, this is, is my idea, so you can't steal my idea. <laughs> I can't enter the contest. I'm sad about that. I was because I would have I could have got a T-shirt. I mean a Hawaiian D and D shirt, <laughs> which is why I was going to enter. We'll get you one. I'm sure we can find one. Yes. Um, so okay, did I lose anyone? Is it, it that's kind of neat? You got Puppet Warp, you got Transform Scale, we got brushes. There's filters, of course. Yep. But I would say Puppet Warp is probably one of my favorites, and Transform Warp is one of my favorites because it gets you there very quickly, and you can start drawing all over the pictures now. Say, teen, are you going to use Puppet Warp? Heck yeah, I am. Okay. I mean, not today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, go I'm working from scratch today. <laughs> but in the future, absolutely. So you can do all these kind of fun stuff. Yeah, you should. <laughs> it's, it's a really fun thing. I, I have to say, it's one of the best things around. All right. Now, of course, there's, there's oodles of filters and things. And one of the ones I like to kind of use to cover up some of the flaws in my drawing. <laughs> what flaw? No. Exactly. I'm right. One of the things I was trying to show Satine, because she has a lot of strange things going on um, in her drawings, is oil paint to kind of help refine her drawing a little bit. I probably should use a better example here. Let me get a better example. All right. Let's get to this figure. Let's go over here. Blow this up. So this one, if I really go into detail, it kind of looks really... I shouldn't do that, because it looks better like this. Because that has a lot of detail. Yes. But then if I show and I reveal like all the hideous lines and oh. scratches and... Uh. <laughs> but anyway, so if you want to clean up some of this stuff, what's really fun is to stylize, stylize, oil paint. Move this over here. Preview. And it's a really fun tool to kind of like just clean up certain things on the canvas. And that's taking a little time here. It gets rid of sometimes like the edges, some of the artsy lines and other things. And it did not do anything. It looks like it did something. Then my background. So this was a, uh, a new monster you created using this the This was a new tools? monster I created. Did you give a name to your new monster? I have not. Ah. But I was thinking after meeting Satine, I was going to call it Satine. Well, we can, ask, uh, we can ask the folks in the uh, chat, the viewers at home uh, as well, if they've got a suggested name for the creature right. on screen. So we'll, we'll see what they come up with. Exactly. I, if <laughs> I'm I was afraid. a monster, I would have big <laughs> muscles and a tail and bigger claws and more teeth. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm told his name is Bob, so. I'm biting my tongue right now. So, so whole paint can really give you kind of like a cleanliness as kind of like an underpainting, and you can just end up painting on top of it, which is really nice to kind of get things smoothed out if you want a little consistency. I use that a lot to kind of smooth things out. Anyone else use oil paint? Not Come on. You are oh. so, you We've are like next level. No, amazing. no, 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 no. We've got some great names for you, Monster, as you're going oh, okay. along now. Let's hear them, let's hear them, let's hear them. Uh, we've got uh, Jiggly Roar. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> Me Happy Face. <laughs> happy Face. I like Jiggly Roar. Or Garoth. How do you spell that? <laughs> Is it a J or a G? With the J. <laughs> With the J. J I G G L Y. I really like that. Last name, R A W R. Excellent. I think that might be the winner. That's so the winner. thanks for everyone uh, suggesting won. names. You get an applause. Yay. Mr. Jiggly Roar. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you yeah. created Jiggly Roar. Jiggly Roar. The jig he's getting jiggy with it. I don't want to, anyway. <laughs> so what I haven't done here is actually name layers. So it'll be interesting to see because. With all the entries coming in with the diversity of judges that we have on our panel, because I think there are three of us from Adobe and then three of from, from Wizards and Company, right? I, like, I'm like, oh, I know what I'm going to be judging by probably. Like, did you name your layers? Ah. Are you using folders? <laughs> are you well organized? <laughs> oh, of course you can draw. But can I understand? Can I go through there and edit your stuff That's afterwards? Because I might give you something like, you know, like this. And then they'll be like, hey, could you change the color? of that thing deep down in that folder in the upper smoke, smoke one? 
Yes, you can draw, but can you work well with others? But can you do that? <laughs> well, I'm sure the other people are like, oh, those horns don't make any sense when he turns around. He's going to like knock himself on the walls or, you know, like, I'm very curious how well, that's why he's so the judging mad will happen. All the time. He's mad because his horns are too big and they hurt his neck. I think it's because his eye in the middle stays open all the time. He's got it's dry like eyes, severe dry <laughs> eye. If we could have Karn the Silver Golem walking around here at eight feet tall earlier, then Ooh. Jiggly Roar can also they uh, fought. fit in. They could have fought. And so this one actually I use, I think, the arms, the horns, and the tail for this particular monster. And then I just went to another direction. All right. Yes. I mean, I could talk about other things, but... We'll, we'll Other secrets, we'll but do then I don't want to unveil too much. I want no, people to but, learn. and we've got a couple of topics and some suggestions we'd love to get from folks okay. as well. So we'll, we'll do we'll do a couple of sample monsters using the Adobe tools. And Satine, are you going just pure uh, blank blank page, or are you? I'm I'm using the basics. All right. <laughs> so I have a couple of different approaches here as as well. So again, uh, for folks watching, uh, Adobe in conjunction with Dungeons and Dragons, they've opened up the Terror of Undermountain contest. Uh, information, materials, submissions are all through summontheterror.com. Now through November 16th, uh, we're asking for your new uh, new monster creation. So yes, uh, you've shown us uh, one sample, and we, we've got a couple of topics to get uh, some other samples in there. I'm going to cheat and use some of the monsters from the library because you gave them to me. Oh, as well because we we're so nice. Because I don't think you have them, which gives me an unfair advantage that I'm going to use. I won't hold it against you. <laughs> but it's not a contest. <laughs> it is? Oh, it is. I, it is. Oh, it is. It, it is. Wait, it isn't? It's, Wait, it is. I'm confused. <laughs> is this when we, tr we trade seats? Oh, we are mine? not in a contest. They're in a contest. Oh, oh, oh okay. Because <laughs> yeah. I purposely made my keyboard shortcuts really obscure. <laughs> so I don't know how everybody like, personalizes Photoshop, but I know for me it's like I come over here and, you know, this is probably, <laughs> I don't know if people want to, like, why is he showing me the preferences? It's so boring. <laughs> I'm like, turn this off, 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 turn this off. And then I go over here and I, like, turn this off. I'm very particular. I don't know if everyone else is, but mm. I imagine, you know. So you are, Daniel, you are one of the judges. I'm looking at the page right now. I'm at summontheterror.com. So it's Lux Van de Berg, yes. Mike Merles from Wizards of the Coast, Maria Yap from Adobe, Kate Irwin from Wizards of the Coast, yes. Richard Witters, and yourself, Daniel Preseda. That's so correct. We've got uh, six judges. Uh, and yes, we're looking for uh, the best monster that you can create using the Adobe tool. So uh, should we? Uh, are you, and are you, you have that 30 days to use it. You don't even have to pay for it. You can try it point. out. It's a free trial. You can just try it out. And then when you win, part of that 5,000, you know, you perhaps purchase a license. That, uh, I'm just saying. Join the creative cloud. We're all a part of it. <laughs> well, there, there is that like 999 version of Photoshop, right? Like the photography bundle, which... Just saying. You know, stop going to Starbucks and, you know, <laughs> buy it. So did you have... I, I, uh, before we move on to some of the, the topics here, did Espresso! you have anything more Sorry. of the, the tools or anything you wanted to showcase, or should we just dive into it? We could dive in. I mean, if there are questions, we could certainly jump into that, because we could oh. go into brushes really all day long. We've got um, topics. Well, let's start. Okay. We've, we'll start a new monster here. I'm ready. And then uh, you can kind of talk through some of the tools as well as you're creating it maybe and uh, give folks We that. could. There's so uh, we're going to be, and this is again where I'm uh, looking at. Are we Helm? taking any questions from the crowd? We've got uh, topics uh, that we've written in advance, but we're going to okay. be asking questions from the crowd a little later on. So uh, the first question was, regarding uh, some animals that you might have in your life already. <laughs> uh, and so this is where I'll frantically look for Pelham, if we can run. Uh, we've got some models. We've got some, some life models that we'll be using. We'll be showing these on the screen in a moment. <laughs> and uh, we might ask for your uh, introductions about who, who these actually are. You bet. You guys won't be able to see them, but I'll tell you <laughs> when uh, they're up as well. And we're going to be asking you to create monster versions of these uh, of these models. So okay. uh, as soon as we get these up there, we'll be cool. ready to go. Oh, here we go. All right, so we're looking at... Okay, uh, so this is my cat. She's kind of like a Disney princess. This is RPG. Her name is RPG. Aww. Yeah, she's a Russian blue kitty cat and has the best temperament. But her, <laughs> actually, um, you'll be able to use her as a familiar... Uh, a familiar, I think. Mm 
in Idol Champions. Oh, no way. Or something similar. I think you can, for my Blanya character, you can have RPG as a part of the character. Well, she, she looks adorable, she so I don't know adorable. how you're going to convert uh, a cute kitty cat into... Well, there's charm. Yes. <laughs> there's friends. <laughs> <laughs> but can you create a monster based out of RPG? Oh, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. And then uh, we've got... <laughs> yeah, this is not the final version. This is the starting version yeah, uh, yeah. that we'll be working with right here. All right, and then... Uh, she has big button eyes. If we go on to uh, a couple of the other pictures as well, we'll just kind of roll through them. So this is Mr. Oh, Ash, nice. Mr. Ash Cash Bagash, and he is half Doberman, half Australian cattle dog. Oh. He is my hellhound. <laughs> he breathes fire or just doggy breath in real life? Oh, fire. fire. Yeah, absolutely, actually real fire. <laughs> All right. And what was his name again? Ash. Ash. So are you going to be creating a monster out of RPG or out of uh, Ash? Oh, man, I could do a hybrid. Ooh. Yeah, I'm doing a double monster. All right. Yeah. And then uh, Daniel, who is this? Uh, oh, that is the late Dante, King Charles oh. Cavalier Spaniel. One of my best friends for the longest time. He passed away a few years ago. Those eyes. Yes. Those eyes, yes, they yes, burn yes, right yes. into you. You're leaving again? <laughs> oh, you're leaving a treat. Okay, bye. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we're asking, would you be able to, sorry, what was the, the name of the? Uh, Dante. Dante. Of course. Well, so he's got the monstrous name already. He does already. So can you convert Dante into a, a horrible monster using uh, the Oh, yes. Tools? Probably, right. yes, most definitely. Well, let's, let's do this. Let's have at it. So this right, will be the, uh, the first Dungeons and Doodles topic. We're asking for these cute critters, if you can monsterfy them. And uh, Satine is going blank slate here. She's going to be sketching it out on her tablet. And Daniel is uh, uh, using some of the Adobe tools we have. I'm available. using a special brush I created oh. with Adobe Capture. <laughs> Adobe Capture is an iOS app that lets you capture things. So cap you can take a picture of, say, if you're doodling in your sketchbook, right? And so yeah. I just ah. do, I like to sit there and doodle ah. lines. And I'll take a picture. I'll bring it into Capture. I'll rotate it. And then I'll send it to Photoshop via the libraries and I'll create a brush. I create a lot of my brushes that way. <laughs> you sit there with a the sketch, but you sit there and, you know, sketch, picture, sketch, picture, and all of a sudden you have like, I'm not kidding, I mean, it, I don't, am I on the screen here? Oh, there you go. You these, are. These are some of my brushes, right? I mean, those are just a few. Um, and then I have Kyle Webster brushes mixed in there. So I currently use tool presets and I use a brush panel. Um, out of habit, I still use my tool presets because I just know where they are, like just by, memory for the most part, which I'm kind of lying because sometimes you'll see me going like, where's that brush? <laughs> and so well, I have to rename everything like A or 1, and then it's like, well, everything's named A or 1, and well, there goes that whole thing. <laughs> uh -huh. And we talked a little bit before the panel. You've been, uh, you've been with Adobe for a while now. I have been with Adobe almost 20 years now. Wow. Um, which has been great. Uh, it's rare that you can find a place that, it, that you find comfortable and that they seem to enjoy your your work as well. Yay! <laughs> well, so yeah, we're um, here yeah. at TwitchCon in San Jose, and uh, you're right down the street from us, so I short, short traveling for you. We're like two blocks away. And Satine, we had fly in from Los Angeles. That for, is true. Uh, the convention. But we'll, be, we'll see you on uh, Tuesday evening for Sirens. Will you be back then? Absolutely. All right. All right, so again, our artists... Satine Phoenix, Daniel Presedo are working on monsterfying their cute and cuddly pets using Adobe for our special digital Dungeons and Doodles. Da -da -da. For the Terror of Undermountain contest, open now, summontheterror.com. And I'll say uh, thank you in advance to, uh, to everyone at Adobe for helping put the contest together making the tools available, making the trial version available. And, uh, and Daniel, for 5,000 of his own dollars, <laughs> put up You're welcome. as prize money. I missed that stock already. <laughs> I uh, had to sell before the market went down. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, so again, as part of the contest, we're selecting the <laughs> most uh, fearsome monster, original monster that you can create using the Adobe tools. Submit your monster. When we pick a winner, the winner will receive $5,000. Also, travel to Wizards of the Coast headquarters and 
Washington State. And your creature will be immortalized as an unpainted collectible miniature. I mean, if you think about that, if, if you're like a student or something, right, and, and you, you're you going to take that trial, you're going to create a monster, you could theoretically jumpstart your career, right? And even if you don't win, if you're a top placement, you're going to get so much exposure, right, from doing <laughs> this, getting your, your artwork shown to, like, I mean, they're going to be judging you, so they're going to see your artwork. I, yeah, right? we mentioned the winner, but I think that's also part of yeah. it, right? We'll be we'll be showcasing some of the other uh, the the other submissions as well. Right. Some of the favorite uh, the judge favorite submissions. There'll be a you know an initial breakdown of like okay these are our finalists, but even when you get to the finalists, uh, you know whatever set that there is going to be, I can't remember the number. You're in the top whatever of how many entries, mm -hmm. and so it's possible that if you keep practicing or whatever, or they say okay. You know, this is our clear winner, but I really like this person's style, but for whatever reason, they like this one better. You're going to get so much exposure. I mean, there's like everyone's dream at this point to be able to go, this is my one shot. Like, right. this is going to be, our, you know. And art directors at Wizards of the Coast and at Adobe will be taking a look right. at your work. So, yes, by, again, by all means, if you have any interest whatsoever, we heartily encourage you to uh, use the tools, submit a monster. I did not realize by being part of this contest, I would be excluding myself. <laughs> so, they're like, oh, no, you can't enter now. Well, Daniel Presedo cannot. Satine cannot enter either. But I just want to make that clear. She can't either. No, she but can't if we see an entry from a Dan Presedo. You can't Pesedo. enter. Well, no. And that, that person right... No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you can enter. The cool thing about this is that for people that win... They will be oh, able to go meet really other nice. artists, right? Like professional that artists. That's really good. Oh, it's going to get real scary real quick. I really we, nice. we, uh, we just had a uh, quick peek up as well. I uh, see her style. Isn't that I love seeing other people's style. It's like, you're, you know, I'm doing this completely different thing, and she's doing her thing, which is clearly more disciplined than my thing. Okay, <laughs> I need to go back to school. Thanks, Satine, for showing me up. <laughs> I'm really excited to see all the entries. Yeah. Do we get to see the entries? How does that work? Uh, I have no idea, oh. but we will find that out because uh, submissions <laughs> will be going all the way through November, and so the last couple weeks of November into December, I know the judging will take uh, place. So I think they're going to her email. What was her email again? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so about RPG. Yes. Uh, I was wrong. Actually, w for her extra life, I was like, where does it RPG live? RPG is going to be an a Adventures League cert. Ah. That is where you can get her as a familiar. All right. And she casts Charm. And or Friends or something. Is that made available through your Extra Life, uh, the Maze Arcana Extra Life page? That is true. All right. I would... Uh, that was, I was going to, yes, Extra Life might be uh, part of our, our uh, next question as well. So we'll bring that up, and uh, we've got lots of great uh, things to say. Extra Life is right here at TwitchCon as well. There are a couple booths down. Uh, so they've got the, uh, the charity corner here at TwitchCon, so that's, they are very much a part of it. So if it's RPG and Ash, is there a name for a uh, a, a Chimeric RPG Ash monster. So, uh, as you can see here, she's kind of like one of those angler fish. So she, so the RPG face is in the chest, and then she lures people in with her adorableness. Uh. And then Ash is like the head that comes around and eats the person who wants to pet her. <laughs> and they're so, like. They're very slithery, the two of them. So, yeah, they move really fast. <laughs> and so they have a snake tail. <laughs> um, and that would be Ash PG. So we're, we're looking at a peek at, uh, at RPG Ash right now. So sort of a, a furry snake. And th this is like the, uh, the face of RPG is the cute lure that yep. brings in the victims. So it's like a snake, but it's a furry... S it's like a caterpillar. <laughs> <laughs> but a horrific caterpillar. A terrible, eating caterpillar. We know people at work that are horribly terrified of caterpillars. Really? Yes. It's a strange one, but I guess everyone's got their... Uh, 
Wooly bears, the wooly caterpillars. They're so cute. Don't like them. <laughs> oh, and a rattlesnake tail with a claw. Yes, and if, uh, if there's other name suggestions coming in from, uh, from the viewers as well, we'd love to hear what, uh, what's the teen's monster's name should be. Oh yeah, I guess a furry snake is kind of like a weasel. A weasel without arms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ha! <laughs> Caterkiller? Ooh, I like that. That's a solid, that's a solid name right there. Caterkiller. That's, that's something out of the Venture Brothers. It's a caterkiller. <laughs> And Daniel, how's it going with, uh, with Dante over there? I'm just starting to fill out some of his, his face, his facial hair. And I was just think, thinking back to when he had those knots in his ears that would be really nice to have like some kind of flailing, I don't know, sword-like things coming out of our tentacles coming out of his ears. I don't have the dogs, they, they clump up their fur and they start running around everywhere. You, it becomes some kind of like melee weapon after a while that you have to declump. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we've got uh, we've got Dante up on the screen now. So that's that's what your dog looks like when uh, first thing in the morning. Oh he's, yeah, he's waiting for his walk and his, his uh, breakfast. That's exactly right. <laughs> you didn't put any water in the water bowl, man. Where is the breakfast? Well, that is horrifying, and I love it. Um. All right. I like the uh, the nope rope. What? The nope rope. <laughs> nope rope. <laughs> nope. 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 <laughs> ah. Well, it looks like uh, both of our artists are getting close to uh, to finishing up a quick sketch of their awesome pet monster creations and uh, we'll move on to the next topic but I'm, I'm, uh, I'm loving what we've got uh, for, for topic number one so Daniel are you using yes. any of the tools uh, from the contest right now I am using a, a set of brushes these are my personal set of brushes that um, mm. I created again using a, my sketchbook and just kind of putting things together and then using uh, these brush settings that you have in Photoshop that allow you to kind of scatter and do all these other crazy things with them. Um, and, and literally, they're just like lines in a sketchbook that I put together and you start scattering, transforming them, splatting them in different directions, rotating them. And then you never know sometimes what kind of weird effects you get. And in this case, this is one of those, I think I actually literally call it splatter, dry splat. <laughs> I don't really remember what that was. It could have been actually something <laughs> on the sketchbook mixed with some water or other things. Um, I feel like dry splat would be a great name for your monster. Dry splat. <laughs> like, yeah, so something like this is literally just, that mark right there is like just what I did in a sketchbook, which became a great kind of like beard, kind of prototype really quick, someone's beard, if you wanted to do that really quickly. <laughs> so I spent a lot of time making my tools and my brushes so that I can expedite some of these drawings. You know, I like doing textures probably more than I like to sit there and, and just draw. I, I still... I, I was going to ask, 20 years at Adobe, I mean, did you, did you start out way back when drawing and you transitioned to drawing digitally? I, I've or how did, how did that work? I've always experimented with technology and, and art. So Commodore 64, all the way, you know, all oh. those things. And um, I've always been delighted of trying to figure out how to meld those things together. And so when I saw Photoshop for the first time at a friend who was a designer, I was just transfixed. I just sat there staring like, what? And then all of a sudden from that, oh, now that's cool. I'm just being distracted by a giant, a giant. That's, yes. It's um, off screen, but Karn, the silver golem, right. has returned to the stage. Um, so for me, it's been my entire career has been trying to figure out how to meld these things together gracefully so that they're useful to people and don't necessarily get in the way, but give you an opportunity to do something unique and speed things up. As I've gotten older and my eyes have gotten way better. Because <laughs> that's how it works. 
<laughs> right. You, you look for ways to kind of do shortcuts, or you have family, and you, or you have, like, a day job or things. You look for different ways to expedite certain things. And, and like I was saying, like, the beard brush is a way. I'm not going to sit there and stipple. You know, I have better things to do than stipple, right? <laughs> um, sometimes I like to stipple. Nothing <laughs> wrong with stippling. But, yeah, so I, it's been that way for a while. And, and so then I started doing my own comics, did a little bit of that, and, and then eventually fell straight into, like, oh, I can work in computers. There's, there's that. That's a job. Yeah. And so I started at Adobe, and uh, it's been that way ever since. And I try to make my life and everyone's life in Photoshop still interesting. Um, and, uh, you know, and the rest is kind of history. Yeah. Well, we're, we're super written. glad that uh, you were able to, uh, to stop by and, uh, and join us today. Well, you're welcome. And, and Satine, I guess I'd ask oh. you the same question. You've got uh, a background illustrator, comic book creator. Did you start off uh, drawing, you know, the pen and paper style? Did you always have an interest in drawing on uh, electronic, digitally? So I went to art school here in San, well, up in San Francisco, Academy of Art, for about five years. I did 3D animation, 2D animation, stop motion, and I've been using Photoshop since 1996. I'm obsessed. <laughs> and um, what I really like, when I did my comic, I decided to do it all digital after t attempting to do it traditional. And what I like about it is it makes you have to be confident. Like, you can see things in different ways. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, when you're traditional, when I, I, I'm into ink. Like, that's my big thing. So if I'm painting with ink, I have to, like, obsess about it. But digitally I can zoom in or zoom out and then see it from a different perspective and, and not be so hard on myself. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm faster now. <laughs> I, I love it. So we're, we're looking at, uh, we're looking at the, fin what's, I think we're, we're, we're done with round one and I'm, I'm loving it. You're putting the final touches on, but uh, this is Satine's creation from, uh, started off with RPG and Ash. Her two cute pets, <laughs> and uh, did did we, uh, we we got a couple of names that came in uh, that kind of goes either way for for both of these uh, the long haired slitherer the the furred terror nomer I like the fluffy nope rope <laughs> I like fluffy nope rope too uh, we'll, we'll call so this one I like fur to nope terror is that what <laughs> <laughs> The fr furry nope rope is the winner yeah, here. Yeah, th that is the winner. Thank you for <laughs> my beloved furry nope rope. <laughs> <laughs> and then if we can show Daniels on the screen as well, I think he's about finished up. Uh, he was starting with his Dougie, his uh, Prince, Prince Charles? Prince Charles. Prince Charles. Yes. Uh, and here we go with the, with the <laughs> final piece as well. Aw. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> you win for terrifying. <laughs> I had a Bill Sienkiewicz kind of vibe going on. He's a really great comic artist, kind of like emotional artist. <laughs> Do you know he did the cover of one of my comic books? I should have brought some for Dang you. it. <laughs> he keeps saying, Daniel, one day. <laughs> So do we have a new name for Dante? Oh, we've got a, we've got uh, a few from the from. from do we the have a new name? Well. Is someone suggesting? Because uh, we're so we're looking for. <laughs> I may just call him <laughs> Kevin. <gasps> oh, I like to call him Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Run away from Kevin, the terror of the mountain. <laughs> I'm Kevin. always a bit behind on the uh, suggestions that came in from uh, Satines as well. I, I do like uh, Swizzle Whisker and Spaghetti Eat You. <laughs> Uh, Stipple Hound, I think, might be a, a good candidate for, for Daniels. The Lord Von Zerovich Terrier. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Night Marrier. Oh, I like that. Uh, we'll make it that. Night Terrier. Night Terrier. Night Terrier. Kevin. Or Night Marrier. Night That's another Marrier. one. That's yeah. Oh, okay. That's oh. I like Night Terrier. The Terrier of Undermountain. Oh, I that's a good okay. one. Done. Nicely done. I think we've got our. I think we've got our winner I there. I like that. The terrier of, for the terror of Under Mountain. All right, so uh, more well, blood, more blood. So thank you for for participating in the first round Absolutely. of uh, digital Dungeons and Doodles. Uh, so we've got uh, we've got some uh, some other questions here. Uh, since you you brought up Extra Life, we'll we'll kind of uh, jump to that one. Uh, I did want to sh to. Uh, Give a shout out to them as well. Uh, the Dungeons and Dragons Extra Life team is uh, raising funds. We've got our event next weekend on November 3rd. So 
uh, if you do have an opportunity to watch that live stream. I certainly encourage you to tune in. But for that uh, live stream, as part of the donations, I asked for a companion for my character. Uh, somebody donated, and uh, the winner was a flump with a mustache and a bad accent. So what I thought would be fun, or just because I, I want to see it, <laughs> is if there's a companion for my companion. If my character has a flump companion, what would a flump have for a companion? And Daniel, the flump, and I'll throw one up here on the screen so you can take a quick look at just what it is, is this uh, flying squid octopus thing it's with super tentacles cute. coming I think down. I drew it. <laughs> very, uh, very, it's very close. <laughs> very similar to that. All right, I'm done. <laughs> so if, uh, if folks in the, uh, if in the viewers have suggestions, we love the suggestions from, from the audience uh, viewing. If you could put it into chat, what a, uh, what a companion for a flump might look like or be, whether it's a monster or just some... Uh, Can we get any hints? Any give us some, yeah, some, some hints or suggestions chat. or things you'd like to see drawn for so the, com the animal companion of a flump, what oh that man. might be. And uh, Satine and Daniel will try and, and capture that. Uh, if you, it's a kind of a uh, blank idea at the moment, but uh, as, as the suggestions come in, I'll throw them out and see if any All of them right. strike or fancy. Weapons ready. Something that, that is a big pile of noodles. Siri, so I may flump. It might, like be, it might be a noodle <laughs> pile. <laughs> yeah. I did it. It might have an ant hey, okay. it might have an anteater snout. Touche. Because it's going to be uh, a what? An anteater snout. Okay. I guess because it's you know a noodley appendage. Uh, a canary. <laughs> a canary with fangs and a bow tie. <laughs> a very dapper badger. <laughs> an animated fart. That sounds about <laughs> right for. <laughs> What what a what a flump's companion I, would be if that's I, something you can capture. I think in, I can uh, capture that one easily. Adobe tools, then uh, I have a I have a perfect accompaniment to that. So there, <laughs> a lily pad with eye stalks, a uh, studious beholder, an awakened bowl of ramen, so that they can wave their noodley arms. The cup of noodle booth is actually a few down behind us, <laughs> and so is the the Hershey booth as well. A flying snail, a gelatinous crumb. I like the uh, a worm with a leaf bow tie. So again, if any of these are uh, are, are are sparking ideas in I, your mind, I feel free to run with you any of them. You said one of them, so I was running okay. with it. We've got which, by the way, is an interesting story. Yes, not really a story, but I'm going to say <laughs> it as anyway. Is the this. It's a hilarious way to make clouds in Photoshop. If you've ever wanted to make a cloud, I have a, a tool preset, which is also, it'll be a brush. Um, it is, I, I see if I can put it up here really easily. And if anybody can guess what this is actually in real life, it's an object. Uh, I'm gonna do my, my big click, oh. No, it's not gonna be easy to see. You can just see kind of what that is. Well, okay, I'll just tell you, because it's impossible to guess. Tell us. It's a uh, popcorn kernel. And popcorn <gasps> kernels make beautiful clouds. That's hilarious. Oh. Yeah. One of the secrets. Uh, I, it's not really a secret. I, I think this is some of the things like pros in industry, I guess these special effects guys use. Uh, <laughs> it's not a secret now. It's not a secret we, anymore. We've said it on the live But it's just one of those things that I, I just, there's the amazing things that you can find in nature to create yeah. like these real short cl to clouds. And if you want, oh. you can obviously make them you know, wiggle around and stuff as well. So, uh, so again, for the second round of uh, digital Dungeons and Doodles, we were asking for the companion to a flump because for my extra life character, I've got a flump companion with a mustache and a bad accent. And uh, for extra life, I also received donations to Wait, wear a mustache. Does it have to have a mustache? The character, my the flump companion? does. Yours and, does. And I have to have a mustache okay. when I play. But I can add a mustache if I so desire. <laughs> Which will be a challenge because I cannot grow a mustache and I have a week. We could put to a do little it. one of those <laughs> like actor mustaches, those pretend mustaches. I or big. I feel it like in the spirit. Whoops, whoops. The spirit which is intended is to try and grow something. So if I just wore a fake one or painted it on. 
it would be uh, it wouldn't be true to the spirit of the donation. That's true. So it's just going to be a one pathetic mustache on my face and my flumps face. But such is life. Such is what we do for for the donations. <laughs> Yes, Daniel's creating happy little clouds. <laughs> happy little clouds. Happy little clouds. Happy little clouds. Nothing wrong with a happy cloud. <laughs> uh, so again, if folks are tuning in to Digital Dungeons and Doodles here at TwitchCon, uh, we invited Satine Phoenix, of course, and Daniel Forsato from Adobe to join us uh, in support of the Terror of Undermountain contest that is running now in conjunction with Adobe. Thank you so much to the folks at Adobe for putting this together. Uh, we're looking for new monsters, uh, something using the Adobe tools that we have uh, provided, that Adobe has provided at summontheterror.com. Uh, create a new monster, something lurking in Undermountain. We've got uh, Dungeon of the Mad Mage releasing soonish, so it makes sense with Halister creating all sorts of terrible creatures that uh, one of them might be uh, something never before seen. And we'd love to see what that might be from your creative minds. Submit it now between now and November 16th, and uh, final winner will receive $5,000, a trip to Wizards of the Coast headquarters to talk to some of the creative folks there, and uh, your creation uh, created as an unpainted collectible miniature as well. So looking forward to what folks come up with. And uh, it might be one of the other suggestions. <laughs> a, uh, oh, yes. A miniature Mind Flayer preschool teacher, which has been the running joke in uh, Dungeons and Doodles for a while now. Something in a D&D &D Hawaiian shirt. That's truly terrifying. <laughs> But it makes you stand out at a TwitchCon booth, so when folks are looking for you, yes, this <laughs> is Daniel. <laughs> they'll know where to go. Uh, while uh, while our artists are working on <laughs> the second round of monster creations, I will say it's uh, a little after uh, 5:45. This is the first day of TwitchCon. They'll be starting to blare out the always closing soon signal in about uh, five ten minutes. So. Before we are violently thrown off the air, I did want to make mention of things that will be taking place here at TwitchCon on uh, the D&D &D and the Magic Channel. Uh, tomorrow, Saturday, October 27th, please do come back to uh, Twitch uh, on the D&D on the Channel. We'll be starting again at 10 a.m. Pacific time for a panel that will be moderated by, I believe, Satine Phoenix. That's right. Uh, this is the cosplaying D&D &D panel. And uh, if it's not going to be distracting while you draw, what can you tell us about the cosplaying D&D &D panel? We're going to talk with, let's see, we have Mika Burton, Vivid Vivka, Christina Ariel, and, and Holly Conrad. Dom. I don't know Dom's last name. And Holly Conrad. And we're going to talk about what it takes to make all those amazing costumes. But you guys can't see out there. Right now, Dom is in this giant construct outfit next to us. He's about eight feet tall. And uh, you, know, you see these cosplayers, and you don't really uh, realize what it takes to make these amazing constructions and how long, how many hours. I want to find out what the, their inspiration is and why they got into this. Mm. So that'll be tomorrow, uh, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. on the D&D Twitch channel. Then we'll be hosting uh, Magic the Gathering Arena. Uh, we've got that going from 12 till 2. We will be back at 2.30 with the Art Narcana panel. Uh, Greg Tito from D&D, of course, from Dragon Talk, will be uh, moderating the Art and Arcana panel, which will have feature Kyle Newman, Sam Whitwer, John Peterson, uh, and Michael Whitwer, I believe, as well. Uh, so we'll have all four of, uh, of the creators there talking with Greg about Art and Arcana. And then Satine, you've got a busy day tomorrow, Satine. Sure do. You will be back at 3.15 for the Ravnica panel. I'm going to learn all about Ravnica, which is <laughs> great. I think it's a great crossover. Yes, Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica also will be releasing in November along with Dungeon of the Mad Mage. 
And uh, who will be joining you on your second panel of the day tomorrow? Honestly, I'm not quite sure. I think I have the names, I believe. You're, I are you a chance? <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that there were some people that were going to be on it, and then someone couldn't oh, make yes, it. Oh, yes, that's so. right. So I know we're going to have, I believe we're going to have James Wyatt, Ari Levich, and uh, Jeremy Crawford for sure coming on to talk about Ravnica. And uh, that will be 3.15 to 3.45 tomorrow. Immediately following at 4 p.m. Pacific, we will have our D&D uh, &D game of the day with uh, the Broken Pack folks. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> yes, the Broken Pact uh, with uh, Ruben Bressler, Riley Silverman, Ashlyn Rose, Garav Gulati, Jordan Pridgen. Uh, so the uh, Broken Pact game will be taking place 4 to 6 p.m. tomorrow, rounding out our second day here at TwitchCon for Saturday, October 27th. So for everyone who uh, is able to join us in San Jose, uh, we wish you the best of luck with the, with <laughs> with the lines tomorrow. Uh, luck in Constitution, and we hope to see you here. Uh, otherwise, we will be, uh, all right, there we go. <laughs> otherwise, we'll be streaming all day on the Twitch D&D channel. So Daniel, we've got your your creature on screen right now. So a flump, yes. sort of a flying uh, squid-like uh, fellow. I heard you say gaseous earlier and mustache, and that's yes. all I heard after that. I uh, was womp, 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 womp. I think <laughs> someone said fart. I have a lot of boys at home. That's all my son hears from me, too. Maybe a boy thing, I apologize. <laughs> so I went with that. Kind of uh, I I secretly wanted to draw a beholder. See now, look at that. She's doing something gorgeous. <laughs> what? <laughs> Man. So do we have any? Uh, do we have a name? We've got a couple of suggestions for for Daniels, or do you have a uh, a name that you had in mind for a Flum's companion here? I think this one. Uh, Cloud beholder. <laughs> Cloud thing. No, no, Bart. <laughs> just just F-A-R-T, which is an acronym for something, right? <laughs> I was going with Bart. <laughs> I mean, we had Kevin. I should go with Bart, just sticking with the nomenclature here, you know. I like Flort. Flort, Flort. also <laughs> came in as a suggestion for Flump. A Flump's companion would be a Flort. And Satine, we're looking at yours on screen right now. All so I know is it's from Cholt, and it will kill you. <laughs> it's hypnotic. <laughs> so, yeah. Cholt is full of dangerous plants. <laughs> This is that point at which we, we, we should switch and see what happens. You know what I mean? Like, you've gone that direction, I've gone this direction. <laughs> Completely different. Well, the flump is and really cute, right? The flump, the flump is, is kind of cute. Are you as far as monsters go, the flump is not is not. Bart bad. is not cute? Oh, no, no. F-A-R-T. Uh, F-L-A-R-T is very cute. <laughs> but I was going for something. Um, I just love the idea that really cute things are extremely dangerous. Yes. And then the, pl but the whole thing is I'm really fixated on the plants in Chult right now. Like, uh. it's one of my favorite gaming experiences was having the players survive just going through the jungle. That yes. was a fun part of the adventure. It wasn't just, it wasn't just the dungeon. It was getting to the dungeon. <laughs> if you can make if it. If you can make it there, <laughs> then you can survive. We've got uh, the oh, danger, I like danger lily. Jane, oh yeah, no, that's, it's danger lily. Danger sure. lily, or the, the lethal pad. Uh, I, Death Toot was a, a good suggestion <laughs> for, for yours. Death Toot. Death Toot. That Which sounds very Deadpool-y. <laughs> but All in right. a nice, less strong uh, language. Do we have time for one, like a speed round here? Do oh, yeah. Do you think yeah. you guys can come up with something for, uh, for uh, we've got seven minutes. So. Okay, we got this. Okay. All right. Uh, so uh, we, we kind of talked about uh, this beforehand. Uh, you know, we, uh, we're, we're glad to be here at TwitchCon. And uh, it, it, uh, there's, there's a lot of people that were, uh, were eagerly waiting to get inside as well. So if you were going to personify a long line as a monster, <laughs> how, how oh. might you uh, monsterfy oh my Lord. A, 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 long, a long line of people eagerly waiting? It's, I guess, a, a mob or a horde or a line or something that uh, might be that might best describe uh, waiting <laughs> to get in to uh, to to TwitchCon. Oh man, <laughs> yes, it's a dangerous game you're playing, but I like it. <laughs> yeah, I know. This, this could go. Uh, there's a couple of 
real <laughs> left turns we could make with that. But uh, well, let's, we've got uh, we've got five minutes before they kick us out of the hall for the day. And again, I would just like to say thanks for uh, everyone who is tuning in, as always, to uh, the D&D &D channel. To our viewers, thank you so much. Thank you, as always, to our followers and subscribers. Thank you, as always, to our moderators doing a great job. And uh, you can't uh, see the, the folks here as well, but uh, thank you to everyone who's taking a load off and, and joining us live, being able to join us in the audience. We've got, we're looking forward to Dan Cakes. We've got Dan Cakes tomorrow, so I'm, I'm waiting for that. So that, that's what I'm, uh, I'm going to be eagerly waiting. Part of my day tomorrow will be eating a delicious Dan, a flump Dan Cake I think we settled on. So we'll be doing that. Uh, and again, do, do, do. I would be remiss not to thank Satine Phoenix for joining me up here on stage today. Aww, thank thanks. you, Satine. Thanks for having me, guys. And thank you, Daniel Presedo from Adobe, for joining us as well. Thank you for inviting me. Of course. And uh, again, a big uh, thanks to uh, the folks at Adobe. They're running the Terror of Undermountain contest now. Submissions run through Friday, November 16th. Uh, judging will take place thereafter. The winner announced sometime in December. Uh, for, to find out more, to download the materials, submit your entry. You can go to summontheterror.com. Should be able to find out everything you need there. And uh, Daniel, we were talking beforehand. Adobe created some of the videos to kind of help advertise the contest that uses some Dungeons and Dragons miniatures from from way back. And those were your own personal miniatures in those videos. Oh, oh and those those weren't actually mine. Oh. I wish. I when I did some of mine, I actually just took footage of the boxes that I had of like I have like three four boxes of these metal figures that I. Yes. I've carried over for almost 40 years at least. I mean, you put a lot of work into doing all these detail works and making your own, you know, adventures. And my brother and I spent hours assembling these things. Yes. Only to have our guys die suddenly, <laughs> right? It's but like, then you no. So you could create a new character, I guess. I don't know. I would have probably let my guy come back to life. My brother was a stickler. He was like, no, he's dead. I think because he's an older brother, he liked to torture me a little bit in that way. <laughs> So Daniel, yes. we're looking at uh, your creation on screen as uh, as we wrap things up for the day. So we uh, again just for fun, and uh, we we did want to uh, again thanks for everyone for the patience for for getting into for TwitchCon. We love being here. Uh, thanks to Twitch for for uh, putting this uh, con on so that we can uh, talk live streaming and talk to other live streamers as well. Uh, we do love live streaming on the channel. Well, hopefully it's making sense what I'm doing. I, I <laughs> don't know. Maybe it's not. <laughs> <laughs> you can draw with stick figures and make art. So this is a, uh, a monstrous crowd waiting to, to charge into the doors as they open tomorrow. <laughs> with five <laughs> or six minutes, yes. <laughs> and uh, Satine, we've got a uh, quick... <laughs> little devils. Just like happy <laughs> little devils want to go and and collect things and see exhibits. Hey, that's cheating. <laughs> I copied paste. Now hold on. No, gonna, gonna gonna how do you that. draw so many so fast? All right. Yes. You're going to do that. Fine. <laughs> Fine. We're going to find my library here. That's just not fair. All right. Wait a second. Eh? <laughs> oh, shoot. I have to I actually have to open them up. Darn it. How much time do I have? You've got two minutes. Two okay, minutes. Okay. Get this thing out. Oh. <laughs> oh, I don't know about the time. <laughs> so again, before one we one million layers. <laughs> before we <laughs> one sign off, layers later. Uh, join us again tomorrow, starting at 10 a.m. Pacific. We'll be streaming all day here at TwitchCon. It was a real pleasure to uh, to be with you all today. Uh, thanks for everyone for stopping by the booth. Thank you for everyone who was watching as well. And again, <laughs> thank you to Satine and Daniel for joining us on our uh, our first uh -huh. actual digital Dungeons Two can play games. at that game. <laughs> You've got a <laughs> good head start. So if we can jump over to uh, to Daniel's screen as well, I think we've got a final look at... Uh, oh, no. Oops. I need to bring in more. I need to just bring in everything <laughs> in here. I need there arms. we go. No. We've, got, we've got these... Uh, <laughs> 
We've got these critters up. Oh, I could have <laughs> just done this. You're right. This would have been more terrifying. Whoops. <laughs> there we go. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of like the exhibitor line this morning. This it was over like here. two hours long. This over here. <laughs> <laughs> Rawr. And now, cool. we're, we're, now we're throwing up mouths and monsters and all sorts of horrible things. So <laughs> I think we are, we are getting the signal. So That's we are terrifying. good to go. Thanks again to Satine and Daniel. And thanks, thanks to everyone you. for watching. And uh, we are, we are out of here. Thank you, guys. <laughs> yes.